Hello, in the following video we will be seeing Shopify's plugin for WordPress. With this plugin we will be able to inject our Shopify store's products into any WordPress site. The result this plugin gives us is not only the information about our store's products, but a fully functioning commerce site, including a cart and a checkout experience, all within our WordPress page. This plugin is entirely free and you can get it from Shopify's official site. You can see over here that this is shopify.com and then the path is sell on WordPress. I will be leaving this link in the video description as well. And now once you're here, you can click on download plugin and that will download a zip file over here. I will not download it again because I already have it, but you should be seeing a zip file just like that. Now, once you have the plugin downloaded, you can include it in your WordPress site like you would do with any other plugin. Over here, Add Plugin, Upload Plugin, and we can take this zip file and drop it over here, and then click on Install Now. Let's then activate the plugin, and we can see over here that now we have this Shopify tab in the sidebar and we are getting this connect Shopify to WordPress. And on the Shopify side, I have over here this development store. I initialized it with test data. So we have these test products we will be using throughout this video. And now going back to WordPress, let's click here on connect your store. And let's select the store we will be using for this video. Once connected over here, we can see that sell on WordPress got installed. This is a sales channel and we are going to copy this Shopify access token. And then we are going to paste that over here in this field and click on connect. And we can see that now it is connected to Shopify. Now that the plugin is installed, let's go to pages. Let's click on add page. Let's close this and this, and let's add a new page. So test page from Shopify. And what this plugin added are a few blocks that we will be using to display the products from our store right over here. So for example, if I scroll down until I get to Shopify, we see here that we have add a Shopify product and add a Shopify collection. Let's start by adding a collection. And over here, we see that this populates with all of the collections that we have available on our site. So if I go to products and collections, I have these three collections available here. And I see these three collections over here. Let's select automated collection, which has a couple of products. And let's click here on Publish. And now if I copy this URL and go here locally. So I will paste this URL over here. And you can see that I get a list of the products from my store that are part of the collection we just set up. And if I hover over any of them, we can see that there is this plus button. And if I click on it, we are able to see the details for this product. I am able to change this option over here, this color option, and I am able to add the product to the cart directly or buy now to go to checkout. Let's add it to the cart and we can see over here that I have a cart all within my WordPress site. I can close the cart and I can continue shopping. So if I wanted to add this product now, I can click on it, add to cart, and we have two products in the cart. And if I click on checkout over here, we are navigated to Shopify's checkout. In this case, this is a development store, so I have to use the store's password to actually see my checkout. So let's do that. And now over here, let's close that and let's attempt to go to checkout again because that password page interrupted the flow. So let's add this product to the cart. And if we click here on checkout, now I am in the checkout for my store and you can see the different products that I added from within WordPress are in this Shopify checkout. And if you will end up using this plugin in your WordPress site, then something you will want to configure is what clicking on this link over here does. Because currently, if I click on this, 
I am navigated back to the Shopify site. And this is not probably what you want for customers coming from your Shopify, from your WordPress site. So what we want to do is from here in the Shopify admin, click on sell on WordPress. You can find this on their sales channel if for some reason you are not seeing that over here. So sales channel and here is sell on WordPress. And we are going to click on manage traffic. From here, we are going to be able to change the redirect URL. And you can see here that this is where customers go when they click your logo at checkout. And they are asking us to exclude the HTTP or HTTPS part of the URL. So in this case, my size URL is localhost 8080 because I am running this locally. So I will click here on save, click again until the button is grayed out. And next we have to publish this if we want this to take place. So let's click here on publish. And we can see here that cell on WordPress is being published. This is a theme, even though it didn't look like one. And we do have to publish this according to Shopify's own documentation. You can see over here that direct customers to WordPress, the last step is clicking on publish. So now that this is done, if I'm in checkout, let's refresh this. And I click on this. We are this theme because we are previewing it. Let's exit the preview. Let's go back to the checkout. So let's click over here at this URL. Let's copy it. Go over here, add a product to the cart. And once I click on this, I go to this URL. The reason it is showing this error page is because Shopify is automatically trying to add HTTPS to it, but as this is a local host link, then this happens. If this was a real site, then we will not be seeing this issue because your site probably already has HTTPS. But anyways, if over here I remove DS, we can see that we go back to the WordPress site. Something else you might have noticed throughout this video is that for me to be able to see my cards, I have to go to this page and actually add a product to the card for the card to show. And once I close this, I do not see a way to access the card anymore. There is this card link which got automatically added to the navigation when I installed the plugin. However, clicking on this just takes me to this page with this shortcode that doesn't seem to be working. So this appears to be a bug of this extension. But regardless, the card we want to show is the pop-up that was appearing over here. And there is actually a built-in way to do that, however, we have to enable that. From the WordPress admin over here, I will click on Appearance, Customize for the theme that I have enabled, in this case is 2025. And now let's try to customize the navigation. So let's click on this. And now over here in Blocks, we are going to try to add a new blog. Browse all. And this is not the one that we wanted to add. Let's click on page list. Let's click here on edit. And over here, browse all. Let's look for Shopify. And there it is, add a Shopify cart toggle. So we have now a toggle to open the cart. In this case, we can remove the text altogether by adding just a white space, clicking on save. And now if I go to my site, go to localhost 8080, you can see that I have this cart icon. And if I click on this, the cart gets expanded from anywhere in the site. So I don't need to be in this test page from Shopify anymore. I can be anywhere in my WordPress site and I can click on this link and the card is opened. And I can even go to check out medical from here. Now, the last thing we will see in this video is how to customize these product cards that we see over here or anything that this plugin is adding for that matter. The way to do this First of all, is going to the browser DevTools and inspecting this element. You can see over here that we have this Shopify list context and nested within that, we have these product cards. 
If you have already seen this Shopify list context or think this looks familiar, that is because this is using Shopify web components or the storefront web components, which we saw in a video some time ago. I will be leaving that video in the video description, but basically it is what is being documented over here. This is using that technology behind the scenes. So the way to customize this is by simply using CSS. So over here, we see that this is just a regular div with the product card class. So we are going to copy this class and then go to the admin over here. Let's click on appearance. Let's click here and customize. And then over here, we are going to click on this button at the top, styles, and then click on these three dots, additional CSS. And from here, we will add global CSS to customize how this card is looking. So in this case, we also have to, it's first of all, face throw card over here. And we have to nest that inside of this Shopify list context just to have enough specificity to be able to override the default styles. So let's say that I want the border to be 2px solid blue and the border radius to be zero pixels. Let's save this. And let's refresh this page. And now we can see that the cars have a blue border and no border radius. And we know that this is a global style because over here, this is being added in the blog page. However, this is being applied over here in this test page from Shopify. That is because you can tell this menu, I access it from this page. These are global styles. And you can do the same for the card or anything else added by this plugin. Now, if you wanted to do a more in-depth modification, then you will need to edit the PHP file that is controlling the template that these cards use. The way to do that, let's go back to the WP admin. Let's click on Shopify. And over here in documentation, we have a bunch of frequently asked questions. And in this section over here, that says advanced customization for the Shopify plugin, you can see how to customize this plugin in depth. So over here, you will need to have access to the WordPress files. You will need to create a Shopify folder and then follow these instructions to modify the component you are interested in modifying as needed. And if you want more information about how to develop for this plugin or how it works as a whole, you can click on this link over here to go to the Shopify documentation on how this plugin works. There is some important information here. For instance, you can see that this plugin is officially supported with default blog themes, including 2023, 2024, and 2025. And while other themes might work, they may require additional customization. So as a whole, it is a good idea for you to go over this documentation page in case there is anything that's relevant for your use case. I will be linking this in the video description as well. And that does it for this video. Hopefully you learned something new with this overview of the Shopify plugin for WordPress. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And with that being said, if you found this video helpful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify related content, and I will see you all in the next one.